G'day folks, today um, we're playing around with a couple of 36 volt Hikoki multi-volt tools. Um, looks a little weird at the moment, we've got Duane A just sitting here in a little box. Uh, I'm pretty happy about that because there's less smell, but we're still in COVID <laughs> in Victoria, unfortunately we're locked down. So the big dog, um, he's, he's in a remote area and we're not allowed to see each other. So we still want to catch yep. up about tools though um, and just keep going through them. Because Duano's just recently had a play with this. I've had these for a couple of months on site now. Um, and yeah. I really like the Cirque Saw, is fair to say, Duano. Um, yeah. That, that's the hero of the two. Uh, the Jigsaw yeah. is good, but first we're probably going to chat a bit about the Cirque Saw. Yeah, so these are 36 volt tools. We've already reviewed the 36 volt reciprocating saw from them. Um, and their drill beast. impact as well. Yeah, all been yeah. beasts so far. Um, so yeah. we've loved the multi-volt range so far, and I think we're going to be seeing more of them in the future again. Um, yeah. But yeah, these, this circular saw um, was extremely nice to use. I, I took out my regular 54-volt um, saw from my, from my ute and put this one in for a bit, Yep. and I've been really impressed. Yeah. Uh, the first thing for me, I suppose, is... Uh, and it's probably no big surprise for Hikoki is that it felt smooth, and I know it sounds a bit dumb with tools, but I picked it up, clicked the battery in, and just felt smooth. So much so with how it felt and cut and the grunt that it actually has. If you'll notice, I haven't changed the blade out. Now, we do try and review stuff with the proprietary blades if they come with it with Cirque Saw, but fairly quickly I normally end up with a Diablo blade in Cirque Saw's. Um, I did yep. it with this one. Now, it may have benefited from it, because the Diablos are sensational blades, but I felt no need to change this and run across to a Diablo, you know, at any stage. No, it did have plenty of grunt with the stock blade. Um, I switched it out myself for um, a little bit of playing. I was just wanting to gauge its power, so I had it out against the uh, FlexVolt unit, and so I, I switched yep. the uh, 24 tooth, um, you know, uh, thin kerf blade across um, the two saws just to make sure I was oh, getting cool. okay. getting the same sort of results. Yep. Um, and ju just to speak to that, um, this unit is is very powerful. I, I was ripping um, full depth um, through a, a four by four treated pine post, so no no ability to clear the chips because it's just buried. Yep. Um, and it was able to rip with that as long as I wasn't stupid with it. Yeah. So it gave away a little bit of power probably to the to yep. the flex hole, maybe, you know, five or ten percent, but it was pretty good. Okay. I was really happy with it. Yeah, that's interesting because when I pulled it out of the box, the first thing is this is why you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, people. Um, the motor is incredibly small. Now there's other brands out there where there's a thump yep. and big motor on their seven and yep. a quarter saw. This is really small. So for me I picked it, it up and I went, ah oh, Okay, that's going to be interesting. It's out of control with the power for the yep. size motor you've got in it. Agreed. Um, agreed. Now, a couple of really quick things if I can go through it. Three and a half kilo skin uh, weight, 4300 mm -hmm. RPM. I want to really talk quickly talk about the 4300 RPM. I only ever used it from the start on the 4300, but it does have what they call a silent mode. It's a little button underneath the handle. Now, what that silent mode means is instead of trying to have an intuitive motor where it goes, hey, you're not using all of that torque and, and, and battery, I'm going to dull it down, you can flick it into solid mode and it drops to about 2,500 RPM. Um, and certainly the noise drops, we've actually got a couple of clips for you. Um, what I do want to say though is I'm not quite sure what they're trying to achieve because it's really only going to work with low arm ply or your 7mm ply maybe because if I drop it down in solid mode and try and knock an LVL or something, I feel like it's actually going to take twice as long to get through it. So yeah. then, yes, you've dropped decibels, but you, you've got that continued noise. So uh, I might be a bit ignorant, but I'm not sure that that's going to be heavily used, and I certainly didn't find application for me to use it. No, maybe some 3 mil ply or, or, or MDF or something. Um, sorry. Yep. But, yeah, I, I, I would never use it myself either. So... Yeah. Not a big one for I me. found that a little bit... A little bit with Hikoki, I have found sometimes their features to be a little bit of a miss there in terms of these auto modes and things. Um, yep. But, but then again, it doesn't hurt you having that feature. Just leave it off if you don't like it. 
Yeah, that's true. Now we've also got a quick video. I've got it in my hand. I've got a little quick video that will show you as well. When we go to put the dust extractor attachment on, it's fantastic it's got a dust extractor attachment, but you have to actually, to install it, lift the guard up, install that, and the guard never actually returns back to its original position. It's actually, ah. I'm going to say, about 40 mil um, from going back to its original spring-loaded position. What it also hmm. does is when you let go of the guard, it continually bangs into the plastic. So I'm not sure the design's there for that, really. Secondly, if you have a look here, and I'm pretty sure you'll be able to see this main picture, this stuff and thing has got its own postcode out the back. It's great that they've got <laughs> dust extraction. Dust extraction works okay, but that is going to get snapped off on site in two seconds. So I honestly think that's a, an afterthought, which is a bit odd yeah. for high cokey, and I think not great. Um, to go away from the not great, what I would say, the guard retracting, it's got a metal handle on it. To change my base uh, for my bevel angle, it's got a metal handle on it. To drop my base um, for my depth of cut, that's got a metal handle on it as well. So everything here that you're playing with is metal handle, except for just this little knob here where your ripping guide goes in. So as far as that's concerned, Hikoki's done really cool things as far as the, the design, and I think that the more bits of metal on that, the better. Just something little that we've got, I suppose. Yeah, I think in terms of the weight and the size, they've done really well because it, it does have a bit of weight to it, which makes me confident because if it's really light, it, you know it's just not going to have the power. Um, yeah. But it, they've kept it compact and they've kept it with very quality feel to it. Yep. It doesn't take up a massive uh, space in your toolbox, which is nice. No, it certainly um, doesn't. My, mind you, it does if you keep it. In the original box that it comes in, which is great. I know that you love these, mate, in your back of your yeah. room. I don't use yep. them because they often take up too much room. When you're jumping onto this, once it's on site, you'll actually notice it sits on quite an angle. Um, you don't want to be bashing this plastic on the back. It's actually got a, a thumping big rubber molding. Hikoki have gone a bit crazy on some tools with their rubber moldings and overlays, but for this one, you dump it down on the ground and it's actually got a big rubber molding where you almost can't break. Um, that plastic shroud on the back of the motor, which I really like for that. Yeah, I actually really like the boxes because um, what I, you know, because I keep my tools in in sort of boxed containers, depending on the type of thing they are. So I keep my yep. speed square and my ripping fence and a couple of batteries um, and maybe my uh, earmuffs in my box with my circular saw because those are the things that I want with it all the time. Yep. Um, and then there's still a bit of space at the top if I want to f throw, you know, a couple of hand tools in there. I actually yep. really like the Hikoki box system. It's it's pretty much the same as the Makita, same as the Festool. Um, yep. But, uh, yeah, uh, really solid. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Yeah, that's a fair call. Um, I'm also a pretender in the back of my ute, so I like the stuff to look pretty, <laughs> but I don't necessarily have it in and out every single day. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, I want to jump quickly across to the jigsaw. Now, without sounding too negative, what I want to say, and Duano, I think, is in full agreement, this is the hero of these two tools. This jigsaw is a good jigsaw. Is it a great jigsaw? Um, no. It, it doesn't have any bells and whistles on it, so that's okay. What we would say is barrel jigsaws... Um, I was always a massive believer of barrel jigsaws, but my original barrel jigsaw had a couple of things going for it that this one, and unfortunately some other brands, don't have anymore. When you've got your barrel jigsaw, I want my thumb to be able to do most of the work. I want to be able to flick it on with my thumb at the top so I've still got full control of the tool, and also the variable speed to be very close, or at least at the front here. With this one, you've got a switch on the left and a switch on the right, but and I've, I've got a video of this as well. You actually have to almost choke the head of the jigsaw to be able to flick it on and off. And then underneath your hand is the variable speed. So to me, it feels a little bit clunky. It, it cuts fine. The oscillation um, mode is absolutely fine. It's got an Allen key tucked in the back here to be able to change the, the bevel angle of the base. And I've just turned it on accidentally. Like there's no blade in it. Um, all that's fine. It just doesn't... 100% work for me. I think, Duano, you were the same. Yeah, and to provide a little bit more, I guess, width to that discussion, um, barrel versus D-handle or top handle is a very divisive subject when it comes to jigsaws. Yep. And I've been a massive believer in the D-handle for ever since I've owned jigsaws. 
um, you've come around to that opinion as well. Yeah. If if you're comparing this to the rest of the market, it's a great jigsaw. Yep. Because most of the other ones that I see, these barrels, they don't have the switches within thumb reach while you're holding the tool either. Which yep. means that for me, they're not a genuine one-handed tool. Yeah, it's fair. When I use a, 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 a D-handled jigsaw, I can hold my workpiece in my left hand and then drive with my right hand absolutely fine. One-handed tool, no problem. A yep. barrel yep. jigsaw to me, unless it's done perfectly and I haven't used one like that, is not a one-handed tool. Yeah. Um, I, I, because I think you, you're you right. have to use the other tool to get to the switches. And that yep. frustrates the heck out of me personally. Yeah. Um, so what I would say just with regards to this is I think it's a very good barrel jigsaw when you compare it to barrel jigsaws. Yep. Um, it's, it's powerful, it's compact, it's got a really nice fit and finish. Um, but until people start bringing those switches within easy finger reach of the, of the primary hand where you're holding the jigsaw, I'm just never going to be a fan of them. And Haikoki do do a top handle variable speed yeah. trigger um, you, jigsaw, right, which yes. is de definitely the, the one that I would watt. pick. Easy. Yeah. I just picked that yeah. one instead for me and you. Correct. And I, I think if I had the D handle here, potentially it'd be unfair on Haikoki because I, I turf that well and truly to the left and I'd be on the D handle. But you're right, that's more, yeah. becomes a personal thing. And I've certainly moved towards the D handle. Apart from the fact Dwayne I got me to choke hold and told me that I needed to wake up and go the D handles, <laughs> um, I did naturally walk towards it. What I will say, just a couple of specs on it, um, the variable speed is cool. It's got automatic mode, uh, which is that intuitive, I'm not using a lot of power and I'm using it really lightly and slowly, so it'll actually drop the RPM and when you kick in, it'll fire up. It's 800 to 3,500 RPM, it's got a 26 mil stroke and it's under two kilo as a skin. So I don't know, it's two and a half by the time I stick that 36 volt battery on it. Um, skin price around 380 and interestingly the Cirquesaw, almost dollar for dollar, is 380 for a skin price on it as well. Uh, That's with right. I these have two... Seen... Sorry Mike, just cut you off. I have seen a lot of deals though recently where you get this uh, the tool, one battery and a charger for 450. Absolutely, that's yep, been, I've seen that's that. That's been around a lot, and that brings it into a pretty good value point. Yeah, it does, that's fair. So ordinarily we try and give you just, hey, what's the standard skin price, because there are always deals around. That's been a cracker yep. deal that's been around for a few months now. Uh, so that's yep. cool. Warranty on this, three years straight up, six years if you register. So I jump online, the registration looks and seems fairly simple, and I believe it's a three year warranty on the multi-volt battery as well. Um, so, yep. in general, I was really happy with these. That is an absolute banger. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It punched through OVLs on an extension we did, but it's also nice and easy to use up above your head. So for me, that gets absolute gold star, and I'm not sure I have much more to say on it other than um, it's certainly the pick of the two for me. Yeah, it's fantastic saw. Um, if we had the D handle, we'd probably be singing its praises as well. The multivolt, yep. so not the multivolt system, the thirty-six volt system, which runs on multivolt batteries, um, has been really impressing us. Yep. Um, and uh, I, for one, am really looking forward to seeing more of their tools um, because yep. I've uh, I've recently um, gotten a friend of mine onto the um, thirty-six volt stuff with the reciprocal yep. and and the impact and, and drill, and he's just loving that stuff. Yeah, beautiful. Um, so, good platform. Yep, don't think you can go wrong. So anyway, check it out. Um, try and get these in your hands at a trade store or a trade show or something like that. Um, certainly yep. hit up Haikoki. If you can try and get to use one, I think you'd be really pleasantly surprised with the 36 volt system. Um, if you like this video, hit like, hit subscribe, follow us on Insta, all those things. But most importantly, uh, comment down below because we do love to reply to your stuff and hear your feedback on tools, bits and pieces like that. So, um, thanks very much for your sure. time. Cheers, Duano, in the little box up there. And thanks, we'll guys. catch you soon. See ya.